They're not role models, but they're definitely unforgettable. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie drug dealers. Number 10, Thurgood Jenkins, Half-Baked. Dave Chappelle's career got a huge boost from his hilarious and half-baked Thurgood Jenkins in none other than Half-Baked. I don't do drugs, though. Just weed. Coming. A master of the custodial arts. Or a janitor, if you want to be a dick about it. Jenkins starts dealing drugs only to bail a friend out from jail. I'm somebody's bitch. But when business takes off and Jenkins comes to the unwanted attention of a drug kingpin, Chappelle says no more Mr. Nice Guy and turns ordinary stoner humor into pure gold. Well, you know, I'd be from Jamaica, man. Not a mercy. What part of Jamaica? Right near the beach. Bye. Number nine, Lance, Pulp Fiction. This is Panda from Mexico. Very good stuff. A bathrobe wearing drug connoisseur, Pulp Fiction's Lance is scuzzy and selfish. Now the first two are the same, 300 a gram. Those are friend prices. But he still attracts the ladies. Why would you wear a stud in your tongue? Sex thing helps fellatio. Like other Tarantino characters, Lance has the gift of a name pop culture gab. Now my shit, I'll take the Pepsi challenge with that Amsterdam shit any old day of the week. That's a bold statement. But he makes his impression in the high impact adrenaline shot scene. So what you gotta do is you gotta be kneeled down in a stabbing motion. I, I, gotta, I, I gotta stab her three times. No, you don't gotta fucking stab her three times. You gotta stab her once, but it's gotta be hard enough to get through her breastplate into her heart. Is he helping because he's concerned for Vincent and Mia or because an overdose would be bad for Lance's business and Lance's life? <laughs> You tell us. That was trippy. <laughs> Number eight, Saul Silver. Check this out. Pineapple Express. Ah, satellite radio, whoa. Saul needs his drug money to keep his dear old granny in a retirement home. And while he may be a slacker, he knows his business. If that blue oyster shit met that Afghan kush I had, uh. and they had a baby, and then meanwhile, that crazy northern light stuff I had, and the super red espresso snowflake met and had a baby, and by some miracle those two babies met and f***ed. This would be the shit that they burnt. Unfortunately, even a little fish in the drug world can make the big fish really, really mad. Where's your gun? I don't need it. Kill mother with my hands. Watching Saul's seat of the pants escapes from the underworld and the police show us that stone resourcefulness is still better than none. What happened? What happened? Buy a quote. How you? Number seven, Lil Z, City of God. Oh. Drug dealing is perfect for someone with no soul, and that describes Lil Z. Was he born malicious, or did his environment make him heartless? Either way, this guy is all about power, greed, and sadistic destruction for its own sake. Made real by Leandro Firmino, Lil Z is frightening and monstrous, yet fascinating. Especially after the death of his only friend severs his only tie to humanity. Number six, Jay and Silent Bob, Clerks. Pack her ass, my good man. Time to kick back, drink your beers, and smoke your weed. This stoner duo first appeared as supporting characters in Kevin Smith's Clerks and took off from there. Yo, what's up, baby? What's up, sluts? With his particularly foul mouth, Jay can be cruel and self-centered. I'm a f this bitch, I'm a f this bitch. I'll f anything that moves. But that frees the audience up to laugh at him when things don't go his way. My grandma used to say, what's better, than a good play with nothing on it? No way, I f***ed out. What's a good play with nothing on it? Silent Bob lives up to his name, but when he does talk, it's worth the wait. You know, there's a million fine looking women in the world, dude, but they don't all bring you lasagna at work. Most of them just cheat on you. Without their weed, who knows if these two could even tolerate themselves? I've made a decision. We're going into business together. I want to start right away. Number five, George Jung, 
blow. Cocaine exploded upon the American culture like an atomic bomb. The exploits of real-life cocaine smuggler George Jung became the basis for a 1993 book and this 2001 film. As portrayed by Johnny Depp, he's a lowlife with a buried core of vulnerability. Breaking up a Colombian marriage was a serious thing. A lot of people were pissed off. Didn't matter. He may be destroying lives and looking out for number one, but at least part of him is conflicted about it. Whatever it was, they were just waiting for me to slip up. And I did. Never exactly sympathetic, Depp's Jung still has a tragic center that engages the viewer even as his actions repel. I'm in prison. You should know you put me in here. I knew you'd say something like that. Always thinking about yourself. Number four, Drexel Spivey, True Romance. Psychopaths are scary, but on screen at least, they're fascinating. I know I'm pretty, but I ain't as pretty as a couple of titties. That's certainly true of Gary Oldman's Drexel Spivey. Brutal, vicious, and epically messed up. <laughs> Spivey is the kind of person who reeks of bad news. <laughs> He's only in the film a short while before he's killed, but his impact as a pimp and drug dealer leaves a void that haunts the rest of the movie. You thought it was pretty funny, didn't you, huh? Oh, you! Oh, you, you piece of shit! Back from the dead. Number three, Frank White. I've heard a lot about you, and it's all bad. King of New York. Even Oldman must bow to Christopher Walken. When it comes to psychos, no one touches him. I'm not your problem, I'm just the businessman. And Frank White is one of his most accomplished performances. You guys got fat while everybody starved on the street. It's my turn. Walken minds every bit of White's immorality. You think you're gonna live long enough to spend that money, you f***ing hump? But also runs with the complexities of the character. This dealer is pure evil one minute, then turns around and reveals unexpected stores of compassion. He's at war with himself. Who made you judge and jury? But there's never any doubt his evil will ultimately win out. Well, it's a tough job, but somebody's gotta do it. Sit your five dollar ass down before I make change. Number two, Nino Brown, New Jack City. My brother. Always business, never personal. That's the philosophy of Nino Brown, the drug lord in 1991's New Jack City. Damn. Crap. Brought to chilling life through Wesley Snipes' charismatic performance, Nino has no compunctions about destroying entire communities in pursuit of money and power. Money, 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 money. His downfall comes when his need for control outweighs his need to guarantee profits. I'm on the run, G. You can never go back to where he was. In the end, not even his brilliant manipulations can save him from retribution. Your soul is required in here! This country you got to make the money first. Then when you get the money, you get the power. Then when you get the power, then you get the woman. Number one, Tony Montana, Scarface. Manny, look at this. Pelican player. Come on, Pelican. It only takes one line for this character to assure his place in cinematic history. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Al Pacino's haunting, hypnotic performance as this Cuban dealer is a grand piece of old-style Hollywood acting, combined with moments of surprising nuance. What is he gonna do when you start moving 2,000 keys on Gaspar Gomez and the f***ing Diaz brothers? F*** them all! He grabs you by the throat I buried those cockroaches! and commands your attention for the entire movie, <laughs> making you almost hate yourself for secretly cheering for this despicable killer. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers I say that's the bad guy do you agree with our list which movie dealer gives you the best fix for more top tens about your favorite film characters 
be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Ooh.